Welcome to my channel. I'm Dante Ferrigno. Be sure to check out my merch shop before you leave today. I've been putting together these designs for the carnivore community to be able to screw it, get up and do it. Check out some of the other designs I've got going on right now. Did someone say steak? I've got legalized freedom gear and I've got new designs on the way. Good morning guys. I just got back from work and I put in 10 hours of good work last night. You know the last couple of days I've been putting in a lot of hours so I haven't had time to record anything and I haven't had time to work on my two-year videos. But you know after I did the update on, on just what my cookware is over the past two years and how it's progressed, I realized that I'm going to need to do this in a progression. And today's only January 5th, so I still got nine days left till my actual two year anniversary of doing this diet. But one of the things I wanted to come and tell you was I think I'm gonna do a series of two year videos talking about various things that deal with this diet. Uh, not only because uh, there's just too much to fit into one video to get anybody to watch it in its entirety, but also because you know I'm gonna to touch on some subjects that some of you might not be interested in. I'm gonna to touch on the physical, I'm gonna to touch on the mental aspects of it, and also dealing with addictions and things like that. I'm also gonna to touch on the spiritual side. And there's a number of things that I've come up with that I've added to that list. So I figured it's best just to do it that way. But for now, I wanna make a steak. And I wanted to take you with me on the journey because so many of you ask, what is it like to cook like this or to cook that? Well, I'm gonna cook a ribeye from Frozen today and I've got one picked out in my freezer that I wanna get started. But the first thing I'm gonna do is set my uh, air fryer for grill. Now on this particular air fryer, when you set it for grill, basically what it does is it preheats the inside of the air fryer so that when you put the meat in, it's already hot. And I found that I get a better accuracy with my time that way. I'm going to set the temperature for 475 degrees. Now if your only, yours only goes up to 400 degrees, I have made steaks from frozen at 400 degrees and they come out pretty good. But when you get that higher temperature, it really helps to get the outside really crispy. And I do tend to cook mine a little longer. I've mentioned this in other videos, but I have to revamp these things because I never know if this is the first time you've watched one of my videos. But I found that I like my steaks better medium than I do medium rare because I prefer that crispy exterior. When it comes out and the, the fat and the, the edges of the meat is just crunchy like that, it's so good. I'm gonna preset the timer for 23 minutes. It should be enough, but I'm gonna be sure about halfway through cooking, I'm gonna use my meter which is a device that you can check the description below for information on getting one if you like it. This is one of the few things that I have tried that has an app of some kind that works with it that I actually love. So it's a great, great device for checking the meat temperature. Now I know a lot of you have fancier air fryers than mine that come with a probe built in. But the thing I love about this one is the app actually shows you as you're going what the temperature is inside the meat, inside the air fryer, and it's looking for that target time. It tells you when to take it out so that it'll, even though it's going to be resting, it knows that you need to wait until a certain time to take it out. Otherwise, it's going to overcook because when it's resting, it actually continues cooking on the inside. So this is a very intelligent device. I love it. But we'll see how that works all here. While I'm waiting on that to get ready, I gotta get the meat out. All right, let's see, I have one picked out. Ah, oh, here it is, right on top. I think that's the one. I'm gonna use this one for The bag didn't seal as well. God, they both look so good. I'm gonna use this one. I bought one of those um, Power XL sealers and the reason I took it back is look air is in the bag this thing was the biggest waste of money 
I'm looking at a different sealer that a friend of mine who's also doing this diet recommended because the sealing material is far cheaper than the stuff you get with these cheap sealing machines. But the device itself is about $300. I'll, I'll show you a, a picture of the one that I'm looking at right now. But I don't know if I can recommend it yet or not. I'm just thinking about getting it based on the recommendation of my friend who uses it. But that $79 one they had at Sam's Club was worthless. Even though I like Power XL's air fryers, I do not recommend their sealer. So here I'm adding some Redmond salt. I use Redmond kosher salt because it, it's just the right size to go on meat where you can see it. And you saw I was using my torch to get it prepared because it has frost on it and also the, the salt will just bounce off of it if it's frozen. So I like to use a little bit of fire on there to get it ready to accept the salt. Now be more careful than I am with a flame and I am just cooking it right over the plastic <laughs> that I just took it out of. But I'm being very careful not to melt the plastic onto the meat. These little torches are great for doing something like this. They're not really good for searing meat though. I have tried with this thing. You need a propane torch if you really want to do a good sear with fire like that. But when I cook it in the air fryer like this, it comes out well seared. I've met my stand goal and my move goal already today. It didn't count that 9 hours and 45 minutes of work, constant, non-stop loading boxes as being uh, work. I'm surprised I can move. I know I'm putting it in a little early. Sometimes I do this because I want to speed it up. Now that it's started to preheat already, I'll cancel that. I'll switch it back to air fry. Set the timer, the temperature back up to 475, and then set my timer for 23 minutes. I might need to let it go a couple minutes longer, but that's where the meter comes in, and I don't have to wait for this thing to finish preheating. Now, I can't put the meter in while it's frozen, obviously, but as it defrosts, and I'm going to flip it over about halfway through, I'm going to see if I can get the meter in then. Sometimes I wait a little longer than halfway through to flip it so that I make sure that it's soft enough to get into the center. Oh! Last night, I left for work. I had some ribs that were from the rib roast that this ribeye came with. This is the last piece left. This is what I used to go to work, and then I have the ribeye to finish. Mmm. I'm so glad I saved this one last rib. <laughs> you want that bone, Sam? Come here. <laughs> there goes Sam. He got the bone. And there's a lot of good juices left in the bottom of this crock pot, so I'm going to use this again to reheat some ribs for tonight. Set this back to low. You know what? Actually, I'm going to do something I haven't done yet. I'm going to do the oxtail. This is from that grass-fed, grass-finished beef I bought from Big Mo's Cattle. It's frozen right now, but it'll be fine in a few hours. Give it a good 12 hours, it'll be soft and tender. Here's that oxtail. You can see the amount of salt I put on there. I'll probably add some more. Well, now that I got everything going, I'll be back in a minute when the meter is ready to go in. All right, I'm back for the flip. Let's see if we can get this thing in there without letting all the heat go out too, too much. Put it through the widest part here. Be careful not to get the probe out of the meat. I think it's in. Let's see. 
All right, looks good. Ow. Let's see how it looks now. Hey, my wife and son just pulled up. We're gonna connect. Not now. Set up cook, beef. We're doing a ribeye. 145 is the setting I like. Start cook, start cook, start cook. Now you can skip those screens. I've just left them in there because I thought I would talk about them with you sometime, but I haven't yet. <laughs> Hi, babe. Hi, sweetheart. Luke helped me even though he didn't feel good. So I was happy. I'm glad he's feeling good enough to help you. I made him. <laughs> I was like, you can do it. Come on. You're not feeling good. So I'm still planning to go to KetoCon. If you guys are interested in joining us in April in Austin, Texas for KetoCon, I'm going to put a link in the description. And you can save $50 off of your tickets by using my code Dante, D-A-N-T-E, and maybe I'll see you there. You know, I work a, a new job, and it's, it's something that I'm trying to get on and get a little bit more momentum with. But at the same time, who knows? This channel keeps growing, but it kind of just depends on how things play out and whether or not I can get off for that weekend. But uh, I'm hoping to be there. But even if you can't, even if you don't get the chance to see me, if you're looking to go to KetoCon, you're going to be in Austin, you can save a little money using my coupon code. I like that it shows the ambient temperatures back up to 430 degrees. As long as I had that open, I was afraid I was going to lose, lose all of my hot air. But I'll never run out of hot air, apparently. <laughs> uh, but I didn't lose all the hot air, and the internal temperature of the meat is 79 degrees. So we're going to be getting an estimate on the cook time very shortly here. I've got six minutes left on the timer that I set for 23 minutes, but I may have to adjust that. And it does say seven minutes remaining, so I'm going to add a couple of more minutes, and then we'll see. It'll probably update and even reduce that again once it starts to see the temperature rising. And I also noticed that usually when it's about a minute or two left, it'll say go ahead and pull it out. So it may be enough time on the timer. but. You can't go wrong with the meter. As long as you don't let that probe poke out of the meat on one side or the other. I did that one time and it came out practically raw on the inside because the end of the, the probe was sticking outside of the meat and getting the exterior temperature as well. You know, one of the things that saves my butt when I'm at work too is carnivore crisps. The job I'm on, I hardly get a chance to even take a break. And when I do take a break, I decide usually to do some exercise during that time period because this particular job, working late at night like that, it's very easy when I slow down to just lose my momentum and get real tired. Because I'm usually eating while I'm working, you know, I wear gloves when I'm at work so I can take my gloves off and grab something to eat when I'm in between doing something. I ate a whole bag of these carnivore crisps the other night because I didn't have time to make supper before I left or breakfast or whatever you want to call it because I just woke up even though it was just before midnight. But boy did these come in handy. And if you work on a job like I do, I can tell you these are great to have handy where you may not have time to make something to eat. They are a bit expensive for that purpose, but they are really nice to have when that happens. They're also good when I go to parties or family events and there's going to be a lot of people eating different foods and snacking. I like to have something I can take with me where I don't feel like I have to make any exceptions for people because you know a lot of times people will want you to try whatever it is they made and I just remind them hey I only eat meat so I brought some of this so I wouldn't have to worry about getting off of my diet. Don't take it offensive. It's what I need to do to survive. But they come in real handy and this is my favorite the brisket. I love the beef brisket. Ingredients in carnivore crisps, grass-fed beef, Redmond real salt, and water. How could you go wrong with those ingredients? You can also order those and get 10% off using my code Dante. Now, I think if you go to their website, they'll give you 10% off anyway, but use my code so I'll get a little credit for it because that helps the channel out too. All right, Meter has told me that there's less than five minutes before cooking, so it's telling me to be prepared. You know, another thing I get a lot of questions about is this wooden plate that I use for all my meals. I just washed it because I had those ribs on there last night sitting in my truck. But um, 
I don't know where she got this for sure. Um, she thinks she got it at TJ Maxx. The problem is TJ Maxx is mostly a clearance item store, so I wasn't able to find any looking on their website. And there's no indication as to who made it. I love using this plate. All right, we're down to one minute remaining on the meter timer. Two minutes remaining on the Power XL. So it'll be telling me any moment now, I think, to pull this meat out. Now, of course, you can set the target temperature for anything you want. If you don't want to have it as well as I do, where it's medium, then, uh, you know, set it for 135 or 125 or whatever rare level you like. People have asked me if, you know, does it only have to go there? I'm like, no, you set it for whatever you want. And it just told me to remove it from heat. You can see as soon as it comes out, let me see if you can see that good. Real crispy. Perfectly seared. I love it. Meanwhile, while it rests, got to hit that so it'll start resting. I'm going to take some of this fat out of this air fryer and I'm going to clean the air fryer while I'm waiting. are going nuts because some of the construction guys just showed up to do some work on the house I've been building. Always clean the top up here as best I can. I wish I could clean on the inside later but haven't figured out how to get in there yet. Haven't really spent any more time on it since the first time either. Never use anything abrasive when you're cleaning your air fryer because you'll wind up scraping that Teflon off of the plate. I've been able to maintain this one for close to a year now. This is the second one of these air fryers I've had. The first one I had to get replaced by the manufacturer because it was just, I was treating it with pig gloves and it was still falling apart. So if you have the same trouble, just make sure to go to, I think it's TriStar or something like that, customer service. If you look it up online, you'll find it and uh, just get in touch with them. It was a bit of a rigmarole, but I got it swapped out. All right, air fryer's all clean. And we're still resting. So one less thing to do later. Once I eat my meat, all I gotta do is clean my plate. Oh, it's ready. All right. Let's cut into it and see how it looks. Tell you what, I'm going to do it here because my table's a mess over there. First, take the meter out. Use something to keep you from burning your hands on that meter because it can be hot. And then you want to clean it off. I'm going to take it over to the sink in just a moment. Let's go ahead and cut into this meat. Oh, it's a little more done than I would like. I should have went for a little less time. This is a thinner piece of meat, but still it is pink in the center. I have no complaints. Mm. Plus, I got all this fat on the plate that I can dip it into and it just makes it all juicy and delicious. Mm. This is the only way to diet. You know, I don't like to call it a diet, but that's because in America we've got fad diets that people go on. But honestly, a diet is what you eat. So if you're going to change your diet, this is the way to change it. Who want to choke down salads every day? Mm. Mm. Well, that's it for today, guys. I just wanted to come and share that with you and talk about some of the plans I had for my two-year video. And uh, now I just got a little bit of time before I got to go back to bed so I can get up and go to work again. I want to spend a little time with my family. 
I'll see you guys next time. Screw it. Get up and do it. If we pay extra, could we maybe get some grease or fat?